We're temporary custodians and our responsibility is to manage the land as best we can and hopefully leave it in a better condition when we're finished and move on. I'm Tony Saunders. I'm actually an avian ecologist and I do a lot of work with um, habitat enhancement for wildlife, particularly birds. In Bimbi, our property, it's about 65 acres. Um, we've had it now for about 17 years. It's covered under several conservation agreements. The idea is we wanted to buy a property that wasn't going to be prime grazing property, was intermediate and then upgrade it to sort of improve the um, natural habitat in the area. So it's a long, long term job and I won't probably be here to see it come to fruition sort of thing, but I'm seeing small improvements as we go. If I have an area where I want to exclude kangaroos, wallabies and wombats, and also for the goats, etc., I run the wire on the ground as well. It is managing for a biodiversity balance and um, because we don't have any of the large predators like the dingoes controlling the wallabies that can be a problem. It's only because I've actually fenced off areas like this that I've got a whole lot of orchids and the lilies etc. So I'm actually starting to see a recovery of those. It seems to be working since we've put it down I haven't had anything get under the fence. This was a solution I was trialling to see if I could let wombats through fences and exclude um, things like goats and kangaroos from making the holes bigger and coming through onto the property. And it seems to be working. I had a camera set up here to film what was on both sides of the fence and what was using the tunnel. And I had two separate individual wombats using it. I could distinguish them by the markings on the back they drop their feces in front of it to say this is my tunnel and the next one would come along trample it all flat drop its own and then go through it's a just a poly tube that they put underneath roads for drainage when you do tracks on farms etc you'll see it's lined with chicka wire on the bottom so it doesn't act like a slippery dip because if you have it on a slight slope yeah they'll go that way but then trying to come back up through it would be difficult the sole idea of this was to come up with an idea to as an experiment just to see what would work that um, goats couldn't use and I decided that the wombat gate was not going to be the solution for the goats. This, this is working. Work-wise one of the things I enjoy doing locally more than anything else is getting onto landholders properties when they're really proud of what they're trying to do and how much wildlife they have diversity they have on their property and I like spending time doing what I call habitat enhancement plans so what I'll do and this is also on productive farms as well as conservation properties so I try and emphasize the positive spin-offs for providing habitat for wildlife and still maintaining good quality farm functions so you've actually still got productive farms it it's not one or the other it actually is a combination of both that's quite achievable I can remember the very first grevillea I planted in my garden at St. Mary's. I didn't realise that passing overhead were yellow-faced honey eaters on their migration route, but what they would do is they'd, you wouldn't see them up in the air, they'd just all of a sudden appear, do a vertical dive, and have 30 in there refuelling, and then they'd take off, and then the next lot would come through, and I just thought, I've provided a fuelling rest stop. Um, for birds on migration with my very first plant that I put in the garden. Ever since then I just thought right I'm just going to keep doing what I can to sort of improve habitat in gardens and on, on the land wherever I can.